Today we're going to watch a video of two female officers breaking the window on a vehicle to remove a man from the car and effect an arrest. There's a little bit of tasing involved. This man is not a sovereign citizen. However, this video raises some interesting issues. Uh, an issue about officer safety, an issue about the safety of people being arrested in vehicles, and also excessive force. So we're going to watch the video and I'm going to do an analysis on those three things after the video. Thank you for joining the Common Sense Academy. I'm your host, Joe the Lawyer. If you like my content, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show. Now, before we watch the video, raise your glass, your cup, high in the air. We like coffee on this show. It makes every video more enjoyable. Cheers with me because we, when we sip together, it tastes better. Cheers. Okay, here's the video. Look at this. Now. Look at this, guys. I didn't do nothing. Nothing. Look at this. Look at this. I didn't do shit. Do it now. Guys, look at this, guys. Do hey, buddy. Look at this. I didn't do shit. You are under arrest. What did I do? I didn't do nothing. Do it now. I didn't do nothing. Open the door and get out of the vehicle. You didn't get ask me for nothing. Vehicle. You just want me to get, get out, out for what? What now. did I do? What did I do? Look at this, guys. They breaking my windows, bro. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do shit. Look at this. What's, what's your what's your what's your badge number? Get out of the vehicle. We're not for what? talking about that. Get for what? Out of the I live here. I live here. I didn't do You're shit. I didn't do vehicle. shit. Let's go. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Everybody, look at this. What? Two female cops harassing me. Look at this. Harassing me, bro. Niggas breaking my car windows, bro. Look at this shit. You need to get out of the I didn't do nothing, bro. What did I do to you guys? Y'all just was going the other way. I came to pull up to this shit to check something. For what? I told you a million times. Get out of the vehicle. Don't touch me, bro. I am going to touch you because you're under arrest. Yo, can y'all share this, guys? Unlock the car. Share this. Unlock the car. Look at this. Share this. Go I didn't. Ahead. Yo, don't touch me. I don't you know, know where. I don't know where your hand been. Don't touch me, bro. You put your hands in my mouth just now. Yo, can y'all share this? Share this. Share this. Go ahead. I didn't do nothing. I was driving my, my business. Driving my in my business. They turn around. Yo, bro, I didn't do shit. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Out of the car. Look at this. Out of the car now. Yo, share this, Get out of the car. You're under arrest. Share this. State police. Share this. Stop touching me. Get out of the car. I didn't do shit. Don't touch me. Get out of the car. You're under arrest. I want to call your sergeant. You can. After you. No, y'all don't touch me. Call your sergeant. Don't touch me. Get out of the car. You're under arrest. Yo, share this. Share this, everybody. Get out of the car. You are under share arrest. Share this. I'm going to sue the shit out, y'all, because I didn't do shit. Get out of the car. Keep your hand up. I just went through that with y'all about your my hand car. Up. The and they and just the released me, so I don't know what y'all going through. Go Trust. Don't tase me. I got heart problems, so tase me. So it's like, out of the car. Yo, I, I'm coming out the car. Get Let me come out. Let me come out the car. Get don't out touch the car me. Now. Let me Get come out the car. Let me come out the fucking car. car. Y'all serious? Y'all serious? What the fuck did I do? Stop trying to push me. I'm not trying to resist you. I'm, I'm talking to y'all. I'm talking. I'm talking. On your knees. I'm talking. Get down. Let, let my girl get here. Let my girl get Stop here, bro. Let my girl get here. That's it. That's all I ask you. Get my girl get here. Get her 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 here. Y'all serious? Y'all serious? A couple of interesting things from this video. Number one, the video starts out with the window already partially broken, and we don't know why the police pulled this man over or why they were trying to arrest him. Um, it, it, 
an interesting dynamic here, and I wanted to talk about officer safety and the safety of the man in the vehicle, is there are two female officers. And as you watch this video, you can see either one of two things was going on. Number one, they were having trouble breaking the window completely in order to get the door open. Uh, or number two, they were being especially careful in breaking the window so as to avoid injury to the man or themselves. Um, you know, I've had a lot of questions on the show. What happens, uh, Joe, if an officer breaks the window and a piece of glass goes into the eye of the person in the vehicle? Well, I'm going to do an analysis on excessive force. And I believe that the shard of glass going into someone's eye would be covered under excessive force. Because if a person got hurt during a transaction like this, their remedy would be to sue the police in civil court. And that could result in a lot of money, a little bit of money, or no money at all if they lost the case. Um, as far as the officers struggling to break the window here, um, you know, we have two female officers and we have a man who appears to be pretty large and they're having trouble removing him from the vehicle. Uh, you know, personally, I think it's best if the police are going to shatter a window that they go in full force and break it the first time. I don't know if these officers either couldn't do it and if they were having that much trouble breaking the window, that's a little bit of a problem. Um, even though there were two officers on the scene, dink, 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 it took them multiple hits. Um, you know, again, I'm all for uh, female officers. It's just interesting to me that they couldn't break it in one strike because the majority of the videos that I've seen, and I've never tried to break a window on like this, uh, the male officers break it in one strike or sometimes two strikes. And them needing to take about 10 strikes to break that window, I think is a little bit of a problem. Now, maybe they were doing it on purpose, trying to break it slowly so it didn't shatter and get into the guy's face. And if, to, if it was for safety concerns, okay, then I understand that. But it would still be my opinion, the best way to go in is to just strike that glass as hard as you can, even if it might hit someone in the eye. Uh, if they're so slow breaking it, it gives the person in the vehicle ample time and opportunity to react. If they have a, a weapon in the vehicle, who knows? I, I think it's a bit of a danger for the officers. Uh, it appears in this video, nothing you know bad happened to the officers, so they got away with this sort of slow breaking. Uh, when the, at one point during this video, the woman puts her arm through the bro a, a piece of the broken window to try to open the door, and she's touching the guy, and she's sort of touching him in the face. And again, I'm not an officer; I'm not trained on officer procedure. But that seems like a very, very poor decision. I mean, if, if she sticks her arm in like that, a per somebody could grab, what if he grabbed that arm and starts pulling her, okay? And then this situation could escalate into something worse for all parties involved because now the officer's being pulled, probably being cut underneath their arm. The other officer may have to react with some sort of deadly force. So just a lot of weird procedure going on here. I can't comment exactly on the proper procedure. I'm just giving you my opinion of this situation. Finally, the two officers, you know, get the glass broken and then they have a very hard time getting this individual out of the car, which again, uh, when it's that hard to get the individual out of the vehicle, they're causing a whole bunch of problems and opportunities for things to go wrong, including for them and the other and the officers themselves. Uh, I don't know police procedure. Some, perhaps somebody on here can comment on it, but it may have been best to just, you know, tase him while he's in the vehicle in order to force compliance. But all this grabbing and pulling and they're grabbing his face to get him out. And I know they want to end the situation quickly. It just seems like it creates a whole bunch of dangerous situations. And this guy was resisting, but he wasn't resisting that much. So, you know, the, the whole thing didn't get completely out of hand. 
Um, it just, it seemed like it could have been handled in a lot cleaner, a lot different way. Maybe they should have called for additional backup. Um, then again, this guy was a pretty big dude. So even male, you know, other guys were going to have problems probably getting him out of the vehicle. Uh, so the removal from the vehicle, I didn't have as much a problem with, but the, the way that they broke the glass and her sticking her arm through when the glass was half broken, I mean, that's just incredibly dangerous. Um, I would just say it, it might be uh, prudent of them to use their taser, you know, before getting the guy out. So now let's talk about what some of the risks would be um, if the officers broke the glass and a piece got into his eye. If the officers are pulling him out and something goes wrong, he gets injured, his head slams on the sidewalk. What recourse does he have? I've got this question many times, so I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go into excessive force. Okay, let's take it from the top. As I mentioned previously, any claim for excessive force or if uh, an individual got a shard of glass in his eye during a, 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 the police breaking the window would have to be civil, not criminal. It would have to be a lawsuit against the officers from the person who was injured. So at the top here, you can see a tort is a legal term for a civil wrong as opposed to a criminal wrong that resulted in some kind of injury to the plaintiff. Many civil claims against police officers involve the torts of assault and battery. And it's actually a little bit more complicated than that. Um, it would have to be through what's called a Section 1983 claim um, also, which uh, makes the violation of certain constitutional rights illegal and gives a person a civil cause of action. It's very complicated, but all you really need to know is for excessive force, you would have to bring it in a civil court and your the relief that a person who was hurt by the police would get is money, monetary. Okay, so let's go down here. What exactly is excessive force? Police officers are generally allowed to use whatever force is necessary to make an arrest or defend themselves. In most jurisdictions, when a jury has to decide whether an officer used more force than was necessary to make an arrest, the judge instructs it to consider what a reasonable person with the officer's knowledge would have deemed necessary under the circumstances. So, an arresting officer is allowed to use more force to arrest a resisting suspect than if the suspect were compliant and may use deadly force if threatened with death or great bodily harm. The amount of force an officer may lawfully use against a fleeing suspect depends on whether the person appears to have committed either a felony or a misdemeanor. Whether an officer's use of force was excessive is so dependent on the facts that appellate courts often defer to juries' conclusions in that regard. So what that sentence is saying is in these types of cases, usually whatever the jury says at a trial is the final word. And the, the appellate courts don't like to delve into these cases and write detailed opinions. It, it, and, and define exactly what is excessive force. With some crimes, they will narrowly divide, def, define it, or I'm sorry, even some civil actions. But what this article is saying, and I pulled this off nolo.com, is that usually the appellate courts let the trial courts make the decision. These are very fact-dependent decisions. Okay, the next issue in excessive force cases is the burden of proof. In a civil suit, the burden is usually on the plaintiff to prove liability by a preponderance of the evidence, meaning more likely than not. A defendant, in the case of an officer who raises a defense of justification, must prove by the same standard that there was a legal excuse for the conduct in question. The preponderance of evidence standard is much lower than that in a criminal case. In criminal cases, they use beyond a reasonable doubt. But many states treat excessive force cases somewhat differently than typical lawsuits. In some jurisdictions, there is a presumption that the officer acted with the necessary level of force that the plaintiff must overcome. Additionally, some impose a higher burden of proof than preponderance of the evidence, instead requiring the, the plaintiff 
to prove a claim of excessive force by clear and convincing evidence. A standard higher than a preponderance of the evidence, but lower than beyond a reasonable doubt. All states agree that the plaintiff being guilty of the crime for which the officer arrested him is not a valid defense for the officer. But by the same token, a plaintiff who can prove innocence is more likely to be able to show that the officer's use of force was not necessary. Therefore, the conclusions we can draw from this is that every excessive force case against an officer is going to be very fact specific. So every case is going to depend on the exact facts of that case. Um, an interesting thing that was described in that article is that is that the officer as a defense must prove that they acted reasonably. So uh, what's going to happen at the trial is the jury is first going to see what happened to the individual bringing the excessive force claim. They're going to, the, the plaintiff, the party bringing the claim is going to have to show that there was some excessive force used here and that their client was damaged. And then the officer has an affirmative defense to show that he or she acted reasonably. And if the jury believes that they acted reasonably, then they can beat that case. Um, interesting thing here is that the crime that the person was committing is in of itself uh, not determinative of how an excessive force case will go. But if the person was committing a felony, it's more likely the jury will find the officer acted reasonably if, let's say, the officer had to shoot that person or multiple officers sort of, you know, beat this person and injured them greatly. Um, if it's a minor crime, like, for instance, a traffic stop, it's going to be a little harder for the officer to justify that the force that they used was reasonable. So let's apply this analysis to a situation where the police are breaking a window and a shard of glass goes into the eye. Number one, most of these that we watch on this channel uh, where the, the glass is broken are traffic stops, perhaps minor traffic stops, the type of thing that a jury may say, well, did you really have to go that far? This is just my opinion here. Again, every case is different. Did you really have to go that far? Did you really have to break the glass? And if the glass broke and a piece went into their eye, Okay, was that something that had to happen? And it's going to be up to the officers and their attorneys, okay, to justify that use of force. Now, uh, I believe that there could be some justification there because one of the reasons the officers arrest people in those traffic stop situations is as a deterrent. They want to deter future behavior. If they let everybody go for just giving, making a big fuss at a traffic stop, then they wouldn't be able to enforce these laws. So uh, there's lots of reasonable arguments for an officer to make. However, it's going to be a little more difficult for them to defend that type of case than if the person who's bringing an excessive force claim was committing a felony, robbing a bank, burglarizing a house, something like that. I mean, we're talking about a routine traffic stop here. So um, it's going to be very fact specific. You know, the police often say, you know, they had to go in to effect an arrest. The person wasn't complying with orders. They break the glass. A shard of glass goes in that individual's eye. Um, it's hard to say how a case like that would pan out. Would that person be able to bring a lawsuit? Probably. They would be able to file the lawsuit. Would they win that lawsuit at the trial? Well, again, that would be up to that specific jury, that specific trial. I searched the internet. I couldn't find any cases or any situations where that arose, where somebody, where the glass was broken by the police, it went into their eye, and then they brought a lawsuit. I couldn't find it, which was interesting. I figured it would have happened once or twice, um, but I didn't see it out there. Doesn't mean it's not out there. I just couldn't find it. So we'll keep an eye, see if something like that occurs. You know, this video that we watch sheds a little bit of light on... Um, 
on police excessive force, what is and what isn't. You know, in this video that we watched, do I believe there was excessive force? Probably not. Um, do I believe that these officers had a hard time breaking the window? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of instances out there of, of large men, um, you know, physically overpowering officers in certain situations. Now, there were two officers here, which makes that unlikely, um, but that was certainly a worry here. They had a hard time with this guy. Uh, so, you know, that's just something I wanted to bring up, shed a light on, and take this as an opportunity to talk about excessive force. Leave me any questions and comments uh, in the comments. I will answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's not in line with my regular content, but Van Bayon, who is a great Sovereign Citizen channel, he dropped this. I usually cover his videos. This was an opportunity to talk about excessive force. Go ahead, give this a like, subscribe, comment, sign up for my email list. You'll get a free PDF of the history and examination of the Sovereign Citizen Movement. Go ahead to, to Van Bayon's channel and subscribe as well. Thank you for joining the Common Sense Academy.